case briefs and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. In 1993, a case that thrust the legal principle of co-conspirator liability into the spotlight was heard by the Supreme Court of New Jersey, State v. Bridges. The case hinged on the theory that a co-conspirator could be held liable if the criminal act was an objectively foreseeable outcome of a criminal conspiracy, even without the co-conspirator harboring a direct intention to commit the substantive crime. The defendant, Bridges, was embroiled in an argument at a birthday party with another attendee, Strickland. Leaving the festivities, Bridges sought reinforcements from his friends Bing and Rolla, acquiring guns presumably to intimidate Strickland's crowd. Confrontation escalated when they returned to the party armed, culminating in Bing and Roll opening fire on the crowd and causing a fatality after Bing was punched by a bystander. As a result, Bridges was charged with the conspiracy to commit murder. In the initial stages of the lawsuit, the appeal court concluded that Bridges fell short of demonstrating an intent to commit murder, thereby affirming the conspiracy conviction while reversing the criminal cases. However, dissatisfied with this ruling, the state appealed the issue, focusing on the murdering act's foreseeable nature given the backdrop of the conspiracy. The Supreme Court of New Jersey overturned the appeal court's decision, upholding the validity of Bridges's conviction. The court reasoned that Bridges's return to the party with weaponry and an expectation of conflict indicated negligence, even in the absence of a lethal intent. As per the legal principle of co-conspirator liability, the co-conspirator can be held accountable if the criminal action is a direct, reasonable outcome of the conspiracy, as in Bridges' case, where death was an unfortunate, arguably foreseeable outcome. Case briefs and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. Visit lse.law. Elevate your mind. Leave the stress of class.